another one, ya bastard! Brought to you by supporters who probably have better taste than this schmuck. Beast Wars Legends. The idea seems like a truly brilliant concept. When you really get into the canon of Beast Wars, that is the scale that Beast Wars characters should occupy. That is, if you want them to scale truly with G1 masterpiece figures. Due to some downscaling stuff that the writers wrote in, they are that size in the show. So releasing Beast Wars figures at the legend scale seems perfect, except when you apply a masterpiece ideology to it. Legends figures primarily focus on three main things. Price, play factor, and engaging transformations that aren't too complicated. Masterpiece typically goes for the exact opposite. The price is heightened to make them as accurate as possible, the play factor is lessened in exchange for accessories that match the screen model, and transformations have been getting worse and worse across most companies. So, what happens when a company applies those sorts of ideologies to a Legends class figure? Well... This is what you get. So on first glance, this might seem like a pretty good representation of Black Arachnia's spider mode. At the very least, it looks absolutely phenomenal. They have knocked the aesthetic completely out of the park. And that's not just because it's accurate, because it is pretty accurate to the show, but also because of the materials and the paint they've used. The materials feel pretty good, but the black itself has a wonderful matte black finish as well. So the plastic doesn't just look bare and boring like some previous examples we've seen in this marathon. And it really comes alive with the paint, like these spider legs are covered in this beautiful bronze. Plus you've got gold paint on the spider eyes over here and you've got some wonderful red paint at the back here. I did kind of wish that the back was painted a bit more. It looks like they've only put one coat of red and they probably could have used a few more coats to really bring out that luscious red, but it's okay. Even the back is pretty clean, even cleaner than the masterpiece, although there's a reason for that. Yeah, you got the arms back here and the head, but for the most part, considering this is a Legends figure, it's done a fantastic job. There's not much I can particularly complain about. I mean, yes, there's virtually no articulation to speak of outside of the spider head here, as well as the teeth getting a bit of motion, although I wouldn't recommend it because once it folds in, it's really hard to get out, so it's best to just leave that for the transformation. But yeah, it's a pretty good looking spider mode. There's just a one slight problem. The back of it does not like to hold together at all. This design involves several bits of parts forming. For starters, this entire back section is part of the weapon. And that will be fine. Weapon parts forming is perfectly fine in my book, as long as it turns into a proper weapon, which this does. The problem is that it still barely holds together. This does not tab in at all. Yes, I know this is a Legends figure, and there is only so much you can do. I mean, this is pretty tiny. Let's just show some size comparisons for an example. I mean, for dimensions, she is 6.5 centimeters long by 7 centimeters by 4 centimeters. So it is a pretty goddamn small Legends figure, even by third-party Legend standards. Don't believe me, here she is next to a standard Legion figure, a standard Core Class figure, a standard War for Cybertron Micromaster, and crumbs. So yes, she is tiny, but really, she barely holds together anyway, and that's still a, an issue in my book. Especially for a figure that is fairly expensive, she's not a cheap fellow by any means. And when you're incorporating such heavy use of parts forming, it should be really solid. I am by no means an advocate for for parts forming, although I do find weapon parts forming okay. But if you're gonna do parts forming in any regard, then at least make it solid. The other thing is that the weapon splits in two and the other part of the weapon doesn't even peg into anything at all. Like, come on, this doesn't go anywhere. You can kind of shove it into the claws at the back here, but it really doesn't work very well. Just kind of sits there if you really, really want to, but it's not dedicated. They really should have done what they did with the Kingdom version where it locked in the arms because this doesn't actually have anywhere to lock in the arms anyway. It seems like like a pretty grave oversight, and yes, again, it looks great, but for me, I think a Transformer should look good and be solid. And pose well, but that's mainly the robot mode. Beast poseability, I can kind of take or leave. But of course, that is not my main gripe. My main gripe would be in the transformation. Of course, give me a second before we get to that, because... Today's video is brought to you by Robotoys. Robotoys is a venerable Australian online toy retailer, specializing in both Transformers and other types of action figures. They've got Mainline, they've got Selects, They've got Masterpiece, they've got knockoffs, they've got Third Party. If you want something, they've probably got it in stock. Of course, that is for recent figures, and Black Widow is not one of them. She has sadly been out of stock for quite some time. It's my fault, I tend to take a while to review things. But don't forget, Transform Elements is the same company as Deformation Space. So if you like this, maybe you'll dig their Seekers. And if you want to buy those or anything else, don't forget to use the code DOCTORLOCK 10% off at the checkout for 10% off a single order. Single use, one time, that's it. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get back to the review. 
move. Okay, so you remember how I said I was perfectly fine with weapon parts forming specifically? And you remember how in previous videos I said that useless parts forming that doesn't do anything is really aggravating? Well, this transformation has both because it all relies on these side panels popping off to keep the legs in place. Just what the f***? Why would you do that? Oh no, we can't have this kibble on a Legends class figure. It has to be completely screen accurate and removable. Oh, that is so damn. No, kibble's fine. Stop being so allergic to kibble. And getting this bit out here, it's not like you can just bring it out without taking the part off anyway, because this is very sturdily locked into place there. Some of these bits are die cast as well. Yes, they've got die cast on some of the leg portions, so plastic flex just doesn't work. Now, to be fair, I think it is modifiable. You can cut off that tab and then it can just slide out normally. And there's plenty of friction here to keep the legs in place, and I think I might do that after this video. But out of the box, without modifications, it is a massive parts former, and it doesn't need to be. Legends collectors don't have the same standards as masterpiece collectors. A little bit of kibble there wouldn't have mattered. This is just f***ing pointless. Doesn't get me as angry as Cliff Jumper because, well, the rest of the design isn't as amazing as that Cliff Jumper, so it's not such a huge flaw on a figure that will be otherwise amazing. It's a flaw on a figure that's just okay, so I can't find myself getting too angry about it, if that makes any sense, but whatever. Anyway, for the transformation proper, you bring out the legs on their multiple hinges. You've got hinges there and a double hinge at the knee. Jeez, that's a lot of joints. All pops out like so, and you also bring out the feet there. The teeth push into the head there, although it is a bit difficult to get out. So when you transform it back, make sure you have this part of the gun to pull it out of there, or at least have a pocket tool. You bring up the arms like so to the side there on these hinges there. You bring this section around, rotate around, bring it into place, and then it folds up against the back there. And then you start bringing up the chest and you want to rotate the torso around like that. It all collapses together on those hinges. This doesn't really lock into place very well because that is what the chest is for. The chest rotates over the top and pegs into place using soft plastic. When this figure first came out, a lot of people criticized the soft plastic on the chest plates. They believed it was doing a similar thing to Big Firebird and I see, putting titillation on a transformer. I can assure you that is not the case. They are using that so that it stretches over it and creates a fully accurate robot mode. The soft mammaries are simply a side effect of that. But anyway, you want to rotate this section around and the robot mode is basically done. All we really have to do is just bring these two parts of the gun together like so. They form a pretty nice gun like that. Lovely. And in robot mode, yes, this does actually look pretty good. In fact, I'd say it looks stellar in terms of paint and sculpting. On such a small figure, they've done a real bang up job with the way everything looks. They've put accuracy above all else, but it's one of those times where it really pays off. And yes, you can make her more accurate by swapping out the underpants plates with one that has eyes on it, which I can't find at the moment. But yeah, it's an option if you want to parts form it. And yes, if you're complaining that I've lost the accessories, you're really on the wrong channel at this point. The head sculpt though is absolutely gorgeous. They've done a fantastic job bringing the character to life at such a scale. Perfect proportions, perfect detail, wonderful paint on show, just everything works great there. Also, once again, love how they've gone with the bronze spider legs as opposed to the black, more anatomically accurate ones that the Kingdom version went for. Although this version does predate the Kingdom version, so a lot of that hindsight stuff doesn't really come into account. Although the hindsight's more to do with parts for me, so that makes sense. I'm a bit curious about the green on the arms though. I mean, it does look all right, but I don't really see the reason for it. And on my copy, they've even splotched a bit on this little claw here. It's a bit of a paint mishap. Bit annoying, I must say. Although once again, not as annoying as the fact that she has to parts form. Now, hypothetically, what would happen if we were to put these pieces back on? Just leave them on in the robot mode as if they were fully transformed and all that jazz. Well, if I'm being quite honest, not much. They just, just looks fine. They went to all the trouble of forcing in this parts forming, yet there's no reason to. The kibble is absolutely minimal. There was no reason to force that in just for that slight bit of tune accuracy. It's this kind of obsessive tune accuracy that is causing a lot of engineering to get buggered at certain points. It's already infected most of the third party masterpiece companies and now it's coming to Legends class as well with bullshit engineering and weird parts forming. Just why you gotta do that? She's great without it. And it's not like the articulation's bad at all. She's got a great ball jointed head, ball jointed arms that even have extra little shoulder panels that go with it. Ball jointed elbows, no waist wheel, which is understandable because of how much engineering goes on the chest and fully functional ball jointed hips, double jointed knee that would still work if they just got rid of that tab, which I will modify later. And no foot articulation, but it doesn't really matter because of the size and oh yes, she does have thigh articulation, although it's very difficult to see because you barely get any of it. But again, the size of it really doesn't lend itself to thigh articulation, so it's fine anyway. All in all, it's just a great figure aside from that one flaw. So you can probably tell what I'm gonna do after this. I'm going to go ahead and modify those parts forming pieces and probably glue them on so that she doesn't need to parts form. And that's great and all, but you shouldn't have to. They shouldn't have done the parts forming to begin with because it's such a stupid decision. It functions fine, you don't need all that bullshit. 
Anywho, let's finish off with some sizes. She is 9 centimeters wide and 8.5 centimeters tall. And for size comparisons, here she is next to a standard Legion figure, a standard Core Class figure, a standard War for Cybertron Micromaster, and Crumbs. This figure is so close to being truly brilliant. It does a lot of amazing things, but it just falls short in a few areas. For one, the parts forming. It's completely pointless. They didn't have to put it in there. I don't think anyone would have complained about the kibble on the sides of the thighs. Besides, aren't thick anime thighs kind of a thing these days? aren't most people really, really into them. And look, I get it. This is supposed to scale with G1 Masterpiece figures, so some Masterpiece ideologies I, I kind of get. But this is just a step too far. The transformation is fine, don't get me wrong, but this with the parts forming, it just ruins it. I know a lot of people these days think that I'm being way too harsh on parts forming, but I genuinely believe that something as simple as parts forming ruins a figure. My perspective is that it is a cardinal sin of engineering. It's something you should never do. It's something that should be avoided at all costs. And I know for some people it's perfectly fine, but this is my channel and I'm just here to give my honest thoughts. If I were to say, oh, it's perfectly fine, I would be lying to you because that's not how I feel. So if you're okay with parts forming, I can probably recommend this, but for everyone else, Else, just, just skip her. I'm sure someone else will do Legends Beast Wars later down the line. It's just an idea that's too good to skip. But for now, with this filming project, it's back to Handy Dandy G1 with tomorrow's mini review. It's back to playing it much safer, and the next company definitely did play it safer. But I have to wonder, is this maybe too safe, or is it maybe too risky? It's definitely something to think about. So, I'll guess I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>